Happy Thursday, everybody. Good evening and welcome to another edition of Reasonable Doubt brought to you by the Harris County Criminal Lawyers Association. I'm your host, Jimmy Ardwan. I'm back here with my co-host, Julio Vela. We have no guests tonight, Julio, except we pulled our producer out. There it is. We pulled our producer out. Justin Harris, what's going on, my friend? Not much. Not much. You had week. the honor of sitting in this seat a couple weeks ago. Uh, an honor, yeah. I think I actually wore the same suit that day. Uh, did you? I'm on a two-week rotation, apparently. You, you seem to text message me and think you lost about 10 pounds during the course of that show. <laughs> I sweated it out. Was that, yeah. was that a good That's... weight loss program for you? Yeah. I don't know how you guys do this every single week. I'm very <laughs> impressed. Like, y'all turn it on like that. You can come in here after a long day in trial or whatever it is, and you just flip that switch. I'm very impressed. Cause... Well, I, I, I appreciate that. We, we do our best for the people at home. Um, it's, it was election week. It was election week, and... The Rockets are on a roll. Dude. Hey. And the, and, the, and the Longhorns think they are the Rockets, jacking up like 30 <laughs> three-pointers during a game. I agree. I agree. Uh, setting aside our sports proclivities, which we may interject every now and then, uh, because what the heck, we can do what we want, right? Um, <laughs> but we'll be here for the next hour. We're going to discuss the election results from Thursday night. We'll also talk Tuesday. about probably Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. Tuesday. What am I saying? It's, it's Thursday. Tonight's tonight. Thursday. Yeah. It's Tuesday. See, that's why you're here to correct me. <laughs> Sorry, here to, you're helping, can't here to help my me voice in over the mic. That's right. Um, we'll talk about some other criminal justice issues. We'll weave those into the program as we always do. But uh, we'll have the phone lines up. 713-807-1794 is the number. You can also tweet us at HCCLA underscore TV. So, you know, guys, we, uh, we had the primaries this week. Huge turnout for the Democrats. I think uh, they had, what, three or four times as many people show up this time and vote as they did back in the last midterm election. Right. Um, I, don't, I, d I didn't see the statistics for the presidential election, what the turnout was, but, but I, I just saw that for the midterms, they had like three or four times as many show up for the, for the Democrats this well, year. Well, I think they prefer the terms three or 400 percent increase. Yeah. Right. Three or four times doesn't sound as, as impressive. But uh, yeah, that's how you, it's all on how you present it, right? Right, right. <laughs> three hundred percent. Three or four. Oh, yeah, that's right. Three hundred percent. Yeah. Now I see what they're doing with those numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Republicans still okay. So Democrats finally decided to show up to the polls. Think uh, okay, cool. Uh, but the Republicans uh, put up some good numbers. Mm -hmm. They also increased. They were up by twenty percent. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the the, the question is, what's going to happen come November? Uh, does the does do the Republicans are the Republicans able to get more people out uh, when they see what happened in the primaries? I mean that that that's the real question here. And look, I'm not an election expert. I'm by no means some political science major, but I find it I do find it fascinating what's happening here. And and you wonder what the response will be. Will it be that the Republicans see, uh, you know, Democrats are going to turn out for this election. We need to get our people to come out and vote. And that that very well might happen. The rumor is, is that th the Republicans in a red state think that um, they got this on lock, and they showed up in good force as they always have, but that they don't have to worry about these primaries, and November is the real day. And so I was listening to a story on NPR that said, from a leading Republican analyst that said, hey, look, Republicans are, they're not sleeping, but they have a big ego, so to say. The this state is red, and uh, it's good that the Dems turned out strong, but uh, the Republicans are waiting for the big dance, and that's when they're going to show up. And that very well may be true. I mean, I think a lot of people, um, you know, from the Republican side feel that they don't necessarily have to show up because you've got those who are obviously invested into the system that are going to show up every year. And, you know, we'll, sh we'll show up when we need to kind of thing. Um, I mean, it, it, look, there's, there's going to be, it's not just, there's, there's so many issues right now. I mean, you have Trump, you have the NRA debate, you have so many things going on. And, and I just, I wonder what, what November is going to look like in terms of the numbers, you know? Well, that's what, I mean, that's what we saw. Ted Cruz came out on, what, Monday? And he gave that interview in Dallas or mm -hmm. wherever it was. Uh, and he said he's, 
remember what the term was. He says he was seriously worried about the blue wave sweeping across Texas. And I was talking to some people about that, and they were like, oh, Ted Cruz is scared. It's like, no, Ted Cruz is a very smart politician. He's yeah. not scared. He's saying that as a message to the Republicans, get out and, get vote. Out and vote. And there's too many of my friends who are Democrats who are saying, oh, this is a, it's, a, it's a lock for the, Dem the Dems in Texas in November, or at least in Harris County. And I keep saying, the problem is, if Democrats keep thinking that, they'll just stay home. And yep. Republicans will heed Ted Cruz's fears. That's what it was. He was really, he was really afraid, um, yeah. very fearful, um, and that's that's what's going to happen. So it, we have a lot, a long way to go before November. But people got to continue any momentum that they have. It's true. I mean, I, I think it it sets up for an interesting, you know, November because, you know, someone like, and I'll just use myself as an example. I mean, for for a number of years, I voted Republican. Okay. Um, you know, and then then I started more voting Republican on a national level and Democrat on a local level, um, and and more I would say I, I would vote the person. I, I was always one of those who would vote the person. So I would say I started getting a mix more locally of Democrat and Republican, and maybe some years there'd be a few more Democrats that I vote for, or maybe some years there'd be a few more Republicans, um, rather than voting straight ticket. This is the last year of straight ticket voting, right? Here. So I, I wonder if that's also going to encourage more people to come out, you know, for, for, and that, that's going to be the interesting thing because someone like myself, I, I would prefer to see a third party, a viable third party to vote for, because I really don't or think a fourth or a fifth or right. Six. Because I, I mean, I honestly don't think that either of the parties addresses, you know, what, what I feel is, is appropriate in certain circumstances. I mean, I'm a big, uh, as you guys know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a little bit of a gun nut. Okay. I have you started to say big, then you, then you shifted that down to a little bit. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's just, 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 you know, I'm, I'm big. A, I'm right. a big, I'm a big of a little gun nut. Right, yeah, <laughs> but, but, uh, you know, so I don't want people coming after my guns. <laughs> Not gonna lie, but at the same token, you know, I think, I, I, I think there are there are measures of gun control that we can do to help, uh, you know, make the system better. Um, I, I, I also, but I, I just don't think. I can go all the way with a lot of the Democrats' platforms. I mean, there's just there's just some things that I'm not willing to go there on, and I, you know, and and that's going to be the interesting thing. It's like, you know, if you want to register everybody's guns and 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 have control there, but you want unfettered immigration, th those two don't seem to make a lot of sense to me. I mean, I'm 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 all for some sort of regulation, but we need to come to the middle and compromise on things, you know. I don't I don't think people should be precluded from entering this country as the far right thinks, you know, but I, but I, and nor do I think you should be able to come out and just take everyone's guns away in a massive buyback program. So, you know, that that's the problem is we've gone to two polar sides here and everybody's kind of in their corners all just huddling up ready for November kind of thing. Well, I mean, I I agree. I think you, you covered a whole lot of things right there. Right. The polarization is an is an issue, and there are ways that I that I think we can get get back away from that. I hope there are, because if not, if it just keeps going the way that it is, then we're going to just have more of literally have two countries that we, mm -hmm. than we have now, and half people are going to move to one half, and the other half are going to move the other half. But I want to ask you specifically what. What you see, the only example you gave that you can't get behind on gun control, which is the issue that you brought up, is you said a massive buyback program where everyone has to turn in their guns, and those are two separate things. Buyback programs are voluntary. No, 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 not the way it was done in uh, Australia. No, no, no. Not, yeah, it was the, the the buyback programs are the, the they're they're couched as buyback programs, but there was when the assault rifles ban was instituted the first time, it was a buyback that was, look, we're coming to buy your guns back, but you have to turn them over. We're just, we're, we're setting the price and we're giving them back, but it's because they knew who every, everybody who had one of these assault rifles because the, it was registered. registered. Right. So, is anybody pushing that right now? There's a, there's a bill. The Democrats have introduced a bill. And, and you, well, I don't know if you want to say, but you own assault rifles? Oh, yeah. Multiple. And why do you need multiple assault rifles, Jim? <laughs> Zombie apocalypse. Right, yeah, zombie but okay, the zombie apocalypse. What you don't, you don't need more guns. You need more bullets. You need one gun. I agree. And you need bullets. What every yes. I watched Walking Dead, and their problem was not I can't find a gun and I have all these bullets. It's always I'm out of bullets. What if what if zombie. I'm what if I'm at Jimmy's house, 
and I don't have a gun. I know. And I need, zombie I need one to give my buddy Julio. Yeah. Well, yeah. What am I gonna do? Well, hopefully you've got Nothing. your concealed or your open carry license, and so you're already packing when you go to the gym. Concealed ain't gonna do any good against the zombies, dude. Come on. An assault rifle. That's right. Okay. So if we, if we want to talk seriously about these things, I can't see a situation, unless you're somebody who wants to mow down as many people as you possibly can, why anybody needs to have an assault rifle for self-defense. When um, the government takes over, bruh. See, well, I, I'm a straight dim. Okay. I'm a dim, but I get like. That. I get that kind of stuff. And I understand, I've, I've seen Mark Bennett and some other people put some things out there that um, give me pause, and I understand I understand the, both sides of the debate, but what I don't understand is why we need to have this one certain type of, or class of gun, and if we don't have that, we're not going to be able to fully defend ourselves. Well, what's your problem with the, what's what is your problem with an assault rifle versus a regular hunting rifle? And the hunting rifle, the I saw thing, I saw a video. Different. The hunting rifle's bullets bigger than the assault rifle. That's right. They are. Yeah. I, mean, they, I, I, they I, I, my, my, uh, my Remington 700. I actually have a bigger caliber. For that, it's chambered for a larger caliber than than my. And what what kind of action does it take? Is it huh? Is it a bolt action? It's a bolt action, with, but with a with a uh, magazine. So you gotta you gotta chamber the the round every right. time. Right, but I also have hunting rifles that don't have the bolt action. That take a what a a 308. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Obviously, I'm not a big but uh, <laughs> small or well, but see that's or <laughs> large gun nut. But see that but see that's the problem is that the people who are advocating so hard against it they really don't understand what they're trying to ban. Well, okay, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. But I but I will say I that mean, I, if I if I could have the stuff in front of me, not necessarily the weapon, but the the legislation in front of me. I could give you a better assessment of it. But I think the bottom line comes down to is that we need to have something that makes sense. No, I if, agree. If you can go, if I could just sell you any gun I want without any kind of regulation, and I don't want more government intrusion in our lives. No, but, the, but, but that's the whatever thing. Whatever my people, politics are. But people don't understand. Like, I had to point this out to somebody the other day. I'm involved in a civil case where there's been a receiver appointed, and they're trying to liquidate my client's assets, okay? And, and part of that is he had a very large gun collection that they were trying to auction off. And I, I told the receiver, because they were just gonna come in, I said, no, 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 no. Here, I, I want you guys to catalog everything. I want you to take the registration number. You can't just go sell this stuff. Mm -mm. Because when you go auction it off, guess what? The gun is still registered to my client's name. When you sell it at auction, you need to do the proper transfer paperwork to transfer it out of my client's name and into whoever buys it. Because if something ever happens with that, guess who it's coming back on? The it's coming owner. back on the registered owner, which if you don't do the proper paperwork, it's coming back on my client. This is a this is a lawyer, a partner at, at, at a very large law firm in Dallas, had no clue. He didn't even know. He was like, "Oh my God, I didn't I didn't even know that," you know, and he didn't even realize that there is a regulatory process by which you have to transfer a gun, mm -hmm. you know, and even in a situation where. Somebody comes in by legal process and, and takes somebody's guns and is selling them pursuant to a valid court order. They still they are now responsible for transferring all of those from from the registered owner to the new owner. And I get that, but I'm talking more. I'm, I guess I'm strictly talking about background checks. Right. And and all in favor of that. Just I, you know, check a driver's license at I, least. Something. Check I, ages. Well, and something. That, and that happens. I mean, in order. In to some sell, places it does, but not if if I meet you in a parking lot and I'm no, selling you. No, but you're but you're gun. never gonna you're never going to. How are you going to regulate that? You're never going to be able to. My my concern. Well, wait, is, wait, wait. That doesn't mean we, that we shouldn't make it against the law. I don't just. Okay. It already is against the law. <laughs> to 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 sell that way without doing the transfer paperwork. Correct. Or without doing a background check on somebody. Yeah. Or in a gun show, I but think. But gun show loopholes are basically that. They're just instead I mean, of in I, the parking lot, they're in the convention. I, I've never I, I've never been to a gun show where I didn't have my background checked. And you bought guns there? Yeah. They check them. They check them. In Texas? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, I don't want to debate something that I'm ignorant of. I've never bought a gun well. in my life. I mean, look. I've I have, never look, bought a the, gun. <laughs> but here's the crazy thing. I have but four always, guns. I have four guns. <laughs> I didn't buy a single one of them. Well, no, because... The people who bought them and gave them to me are dead. I don't know if there's registration paperwork. Right. One of them is a police officer's former service weapon. It was my uncle's right. service weapon. He it ended up in my dad. Look, I, I, I inherited a bunch of them. I, I just got my great, great, great grandfather's Remington double barrel shotgun from the 1890s. Nice. Wow. Day. Yeah. I think that falls into so, an exception. Yeah. But I mean, That's that, that was definitely way before registration. <laughs> but, but no, I mean, I, I think there's, there, there's a lot of debates like what we're having 
that I think are going to motivate people on both sides to go out. I think you're going to see, I think in November you're going to see record numbers of people go out uh, to vote because of debates like this that, that we're having right here. I mean, you're, you're going to see people on both sides of the issue for whatever their, their stance is. I think you're going to see a lot of people come out this well, year. Well, now, now Trump's talking about gun regulation and tariffs. He's all over the place. Is that man. Republican? Is it not Republican? He's all over the place. I mean, look, I don't know that the Republican Party really has... The, the, the problem for me is both parties are so disorganized. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, 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 the Democrats really don't have a message. No. The Republicans, they're, they're cannibalizing their own kind right now, what we saw in the local primaries. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, 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 they're taking out each other. Um, in, in some of these races. Uh, they, they can't seem to get their act together in Washington and all get on the same page. It, neither, neither party, I mean, you'd think with all the problems in the Republican Party right now, that the Democrats would be just able to take full advantage of this. And they can't because they're just as disorganized. They have no message. What's, what's their message? Not Trump. Well, and that's just what the Republicans <laughs> yeah. were for eight years during Obama. Right. And, and, and then when the Republicans came to power, everyone expected them to have a plan in place for all no. the things. That, and they hadn't. No and plan. That was, that's the frustrating thing is that as someone who generally d d supports Democrats, I hope to God that they are someone is behind the scenes saying, once we're, we're back in power, we have a clear way forward. We know what we're going to do, whether it's investigating Trump having realistic investigations in Congress, if that's even capable in Congress? Uh, no, it's not. Look, I mean, they, these are the people who investigated baseball players for using steroids. Let, let's be honest here. Congress and the, 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 the wackadoos we have up there in Congress right now, that's the kind of crap they do, you know? Okay. They, they want to haul people up there to, to talk about whether or not you took steroids. So I don't care about that. Let me take a moment, if I can, and yeah. kind of get on my soapbox, because I'm glad that you said that. And I agree with you that we have too many people who you, anyone can characterize as a wackadoo who's our representatives in Congress. And that's why I wanted so strongly to have the last series of shows that we had where we brought candidates on here, people who were running for office. We opened up the phone lines, which it looks like they're open now, so you can call in and tell me more about guns that I don't know if you want to. Um, <laughs> but... We, we have, we don't have debate and discourse. And debate doesn't have to be ugly. It doesn't mean arguing. Debate means an exchange of ideas with an, a desire to reach a compromise and flesh out something that's, that's an actual answer. And that's what we need to have more of. And instead what we have is the Supreme Court telling people you can have your protest, but you have, you're going to be over here, and then the counter-protesters have to apply for a permit, and then they can have their counter-protest to your protest over here. And I've been saying for a while, and I don't advocate violence, but I think that we would have a whole lot less of this stuff going on if people were just allowed to mix it up. If, if, if there wouldn't, yeah, yeah. If someone's racist and they're out in the street and they're, and they're saying stuff that's, that's, that's offensive to you and that's racist and is disgusting, they, will, they might think about it a little bit more often Someone else's reaction is to punch them in the nose. Hey, I, look, you know. But when they're when they're when they're separated by fences and a hundred yeah, feet away, I, I agree. Well, that's exactly what they said. I, I heard a quote some time ago about owning guns. The only people, the only reason they didn't back in the old west uh, that people didn't insult another person is because the other person would pull out a well, gun and yeah, shoot them. But, but look at this. Look, yeah. look at everybody wants to make an issue about all these kids who you know show up and, and shoot up schools and everything else. You know. I mean, back in, what, what, what the hell, uh, when, back in my day, which wasn't all that long ago, I mean, granted, it was over two decades ago now, but, but back then when I was in junior high or high school and there was some kid who was messed up or had some, you know, was, was goth or whatever the hell he was back then, I mean, you know, nobody, nobody worried about them coming and shoot up the school, mm -mm. okay? You, you might see that they committed suicide or something like that, which I'm not advocating that that's a better role. But, I mean, when did it become, I'm going to shoot everybody else and not just take myself out, you know? I mean, well, back when we were kids, at least me, I spent a lot of those years that you're referring to when the assault weapons ban was in place. And from what I've, what I've heard, and I haven't checked any statistics, but I've heard them from, like, actual news sources, NPR and other places like that, which people might think have their own biases, but whatever, um, I heard that like during the assault weapons ban, something like three million assault rifles were manufactured or sold, and then after the assault rifle last year, there were like 11 million manufactured and right. sold in the United States. I also heard the statistic in the same article that 
50% or just over 50% of, of guns, civilian owned guns in the United States are owned by 3% of the population. That's true. That's, that's hoarding but, but, guns for but see, either a zombie about... apocalypse, which I don't know, I don't think sounds very reasonable, or that's someone who has the intent to, if he, he or she thinks, and most often it's he, and it's a he that looks like me and comes from a background that's like me, if he thinks something bad is going to happen, he is going to use that to but kill the people who he thinks are, are doing right, something but, bad. But the assault weapons ban was from 94 to 2000. I'm talking about the, it was from 94 to 2004. That's when I was in junior high and high school. Okay, so we'll perfect. see. So I was in junior high and high school pre pre ban. Um, but you are older. That's but, right. but 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 um, Columbine happened during that time. Uh huh. The, the, wasn't the assault weapons ban in part response to Columbine or or no? no. Columbine was ninety eight. Oh, it was that okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's right in the middle. But they and, and they Columbine also didn't happened. Use... But that's what I'm saying. In the eighties, we didn't have that crap. We didn't, we didn't have people going up and 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 go and get dad's forty five and. And, and marching through, I mean, they might get the 45 and take themselves out. They didn't come into class and take out other people. Well, I mean, but, but see, this is, but, you know, th that's the problem. You know, back in the day, we just used to solve stuff out in the, on the hallway, you know? I mean, there was a fight every day in school. People get punched, people get thrown into lockers, people get thrown into the trophy cases. I mean, that stuff happened. Nowadays, I feel like trophy they- Trophy cases, like they broke the glass? Yeah. Oh, that's a little, yeah. that's a little much, but. But I mean, but, we had we had people we used to be able to solve problems the old-fashioned way, and I, you know. And 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 I tell you know, look, I tell my kid just don't be the one that gets caught. If somebody, <laughs> if somebody comes up to you and starts talking, you know, if they if they punch, <laughs> stand up for yourself. Yep. Don't don't go be don't go be a tattletale. Then and just punch them. Just make sure you're not the last one to get caught, kind of thing. You know, I mean, because the last one. <laughs> Just yeah. throw the punch. Is the one who gets That's caught. why we're all in business. Well, right. you know, now they can have at least a year, a couple sessions ago, they ha they can have uh, juvenile magistrates at the school. Yeah. They, they can actually have court at the school. Really? Yeah. And so now we're gonna arm, we're gonna arm the teachers and arm the guards, and everybody's gonna walk through school. All the kids are gonna walk to school like this. With their hands behind their back, we're gonna have a magistrate somewhere in uh, on campus suspension, and all the blacks and Mexicans are gonna get screwed. <laughs> so you're is saying that, is that so, so you're saying that <laughs> schools are gonna look more like 49 San Jacinto? They City. look like prisons, <laughs> man. But I, I will be the first one to say, you walk into my house at night, I will destroy you. Yeah. Like, what am I supposed to do, man? Everybody not, else has guns. What am I going to do? No one's advocating for you not to be able to defend yourself, okay? But we need to have, there needs to be something common sense. And I don't want to, we don't need to devolve this into, into gun, um, gun control debate, which we can, because that's the whole point of what we're trying to do is to get, have public discourse and mm -hmm. encourage maybe a phone call or something so it's not just us talking to each other. But, you know, I, I don't know. So the Russians uh, apparently either wanted uh, Trump or Bernie to win. Just anyone but Hillary. And they, you know, so Trump won and... Uh, apparently there are a lot of people in the Democratic Party who felt that way too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, there's just people in Russia, but... Yeah, yeah. I, I think there were a lot of people here who felt that way, but then, but then, I mean, that's the whole irony, right? Is that, is that they are alleging that Trump colluded with the Russians when Clearly, the Clintons colluded with somebody to to rig the Democratic primary. I mean, uh, it's just both sides are 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 so I don't. I mean, that thing's gotten out of control. Do you, do you see that there's any difference between um, felony DNRs to the county judges DNRs, uh, Democrats versus Republicans, or felony Democrats versus Republicans? What do you mean? Do you In any way. Wait, where did you go with this? You just totally switched subjects yeah. from Russia. I did, I did. Well, I mean, I did. I, I went ready. to Russia, you didn't even, you didn't then I went to a, local. Do you see how, like... You didn't even make a stop in Greenland along the way. No, I, mean, I you didn't. You just came well, straight back. You didn't even stop at Sarah I did, Palin's I house. I didn't. We're just kind of talking here. What I'm trying to say is... got to give some segues, man. I, I should, on. I should. So, um, how about them tariffs? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... You're just you, ask your first place. question, what's the DNR? What are you talking about? Okay, so do you find that, I find that um, the Democrats and Republicans may be a little bit, as far as judicial candidates, are a little bit more aligned on the felony side than they are on the misdemeanor side. I oh, think, you mean just in terms of their overall political views, how, yes, they, how they operate cases? I do. 
I mean, I can, I can probably see uh, a, a viable argument for that. I mean, to some degree, I, I don't know how you can be with the felony side. I, I don't know how you can take a position. It's, it's much harder, I think, to, to go and say something like, well, I'm in favor of, of pretrial release. Right, that's what I'm talking about. On all felony cases. I mean, you can't do that. Right. You know? and, and they all did. Huh? They all did. They're what? not in favor of pretrial release. Oh, right. Yeah, they all said can't do it. Well, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I, I mean, I think just once you get up to felony court, I mean, the stakes are higher. You're talking about murders. You're talking about uh, serious violent crime offenses. I mean, you've got, you've got real substantive issues that, I mean, I think those are issues for both parties. I don't think that's just a Republican issue mm -hmm. of wanting to be tough on violent crimes. Um, I mean, look, the, the DA's office came out today and said they're going to be a step up enforcement. I mean, one of, one of Kim Og's policies is to let the little stuff go and focus more on prosecuting violent offenders. And so, I mean, I, I, I'm not that, I agree with you on that. I mean, I, it doesn't surprise me I, I, that, that you really couldn't draw a distinction between the way a Democrat or a Republican operates on a felony bench. I think pretty much you, you would have to operate the same regardless of your political affiliation. Right. Yeah. I'd go so far as to say is that the Democrats and Republicans on the felony side are pretty, going what you said, are pretty close to what um, a common sense approach is. You know, you can't, murders, capital murders, aggravated robberies, burglars, nobody even the Dem is not going to say that they should be on a PR bond yeah. most of the time. I'd like to. I'd like to suspect, but on the misdemeanor side, um, I think it's coming to play a little bit more. What says you, Justin? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I think that Republicans have done a good job of couching themselves as tough on crime, which must mean that the Democrats are weak on crime, and that's not the case. I haven't seen a judge, no matter what no. the party is. Yeah. You know, when they're faced with somebody who's done who's done wrong, especially against another person in, a, in an act of violence, I don't see when I when I'm when I'm my client I'm sitting next to my client and we're getting the sentence. I don't see a different sentence from a Republican judge versus a, a Democratic judge. No, I just I haven't seen that. No. So I, I mean I think what you're saying is correct. Unless they've been tainted by some ragtag organizations. Like who? <laughs> no, I didn't say that. That was I'm 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 quoting things from the <laughs> the press. So, Judge McSpadden, let's talk about it. Well, I don't know, because Judge McSpadden said that, that he thinks that, that some young black men might be getting bad advice from their parents and your son's not black and you're telling him Oh, my son gets bad advice from me every day. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, my, there is no doubt that my son gets horrible <laughs> advice from me every day. You, you know, but the more and more people we talk to says that Judge McSpadden has been not only uh, the longest, one of the, if not the longest presiding judge on the district courts, but has also provided fair trials to everybody who's been in front of. Now, uh, First Amendment free speech allows him to talk about whatever he wants to under that, under the parameters of the law. Uh, the big question is, is for everyone, is does it affect his ability to be a fair and impartial judge. What says you? Well, okay, I don't think that him saying those things affects his ability to be an a fair and impartial judge. And getting a fair trial from a judge, I've heard that a lot, you're right. And I've been in Judge McSpadden's court multiple times and I've, and I've always been treated respectfully and professionally in there. I actually like the way that he conducts his courtroom, that when he's doing a plea, he wants everything to stop, everybody to sit down. I think that's, that's showing respect for the system, showing respect for the defendant that's in front of you, showing the respect for any victims that might be there or may not be there but still still exist, um, rather than everybody rushing around and not being quiet. And I, I do like those things, but I'd like to see if he's been fair on punishment. And I think the only way that we, you can do that, and I don't know if you if you can do this with someone who's been on the bench for 36 years, but is to go through all of the sentences that he's meted out and look at compare them and if that's even possible if it is possible it's going to be an enormous undertaking but um, so I don't think that his comments make mean that he he can't be unfair I think that if his comments come from a place in his heart or his mind that place might mean that he may not be able to be fair but I'm not saying I have not seen that or experienced an unfairness or a bias um, in my practicing in Judge McSpadden's court 
that being said, the, the, the statements that he made, and I think we're specifically talking about statements he made in a Chronicle interview a few weeks ago, um, where he said, and I'm going to paraphrase it, that that people who come into his felony courts, y'all talked about it some last week, but people who come into his felony courts are, have, are, are tainted people. And then he went on to talk about young black men seem to not have a respect for the system, and he thinks that respect is coming from, as he characterized it, ragtag organizations, and he specifically mentioned Black Lives Matter. And I think that that is a very problematic, a reprehensible statement for, for a sitting judge to say. And I think that that needs to be looked at. So what, so you recruit him from every uh, African American or black individual in his court? I don't, think you, I don't think that gets you that, no. To recuse a judge or disqualify a judge, you have to show that they have an actual particular, I mean, right, right. an actual particular bias and that your client will not be able to get a fair trial in there. Or that they can't consider the full range of punishment right. or something like that. I, mean, I, I, I don't think decision. that amounts to a legal bias. I mean, I, I, I just wonder. Well, he has a legal bias. He's established a legal bias yeah. in potentially setting bonds or, giving, or granting of PR bonds. Maybe. And, and he may have a bias in punishment. And those are two things that are distinct and separate before and way and, and way before and then after any kind of trial. And what we've heard is that this part in the middle, he's very fair and, and unbiased on. But make no mistake, the stuff from the very beginning, the, the setting of bail, granting of a PR bond, if that's the case, that can have a lot of effect through the, through the trial. And if we have to go to the jail and see our clients every single time to just ask them a simple question, they're, we're not, they're not able to aid in their defense as well right. as somebody we can pick up the phone or shoot a text message to and say, hey, yeah. tell me about this. I've never had an issue in his court. I haven't either. Ever? That I know about. Well, right. Right? But, I mean, but look, how many, how many judges do you not know about? That's fair. He, he did say you know, something I, that we I feel mean, like some of them, a lot of other ones think. Well, and, and the question is, why, why did he get on with the Chronicle and say this stuff? Right. I mean, I, I, that, that's what I just don't understand, is I don't understand the, the, the purpose behind it, you know? I mean, why he felt the need to make that statement. Um, well, he's very smart politically. Yeah. He's been doing this for 36 years. He's, he's not just smart politically. Judge McSpadden is a very smart jurist. He's very experienced, and he's very reasonable in the things that I've experienced from him. So I'm also scratching my head on why he was sitting down with a reporter, what they were talking about more. I mean, they were talking about kind of bail reform and things like that. Yeah. So I, I got to wonder if there was, if he's... Maybe out of context, maybe? No, I mean, look. I don't know if it's out of context, but if, if it's, if he's kind of, I don't know if he's planning, he's running again. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's, I, I know that the, uh, there's a lot of individuals that are infuriated by his comments. But there are probably just as many people who believe right. that his comments are 100% accurate. Right. Do, you know? So um, do you think it was a play to the times? I don't know. That's tough. I don't know. Judge, come on the show. Judge McSpadden, come on the show. We'd love to talk to you. Or call in now. Set, it, set us straight. I mean, a lot of people at least have questions about this. Yeah, I mean, I... Uh... I don't know. I don't think it's grounds to recuse him uh, on anything. I really don't. I don't see where the where the basis to legally recuse him based upon what he said uh, comes from. Um, I mean, I can I can see both sides of the argument, frankly. I mean, I can see those who are appalled by what he said, um, but then I can also see those who say, you know, look at look at some of the problems we've seen because of these kinds of organizations. Look at what some of them have done. Look at, you know, and I, so, I mean, frankly, I, I kind of see both sides of the argument on this. Um, I, I don't know. I don't think he, I think we have a, I, I don't know. I'm 36 years old. Um, I don't want to sound like I'm older, but I think we have a problem with just kind of general disrespect for not just the system, the criminal justice system, but for a lot of things. For yes. You turn to social media. What I do when I read these articles online look, is I scroll to the bottom in the comments and I just look at the comments well, and most of them uh, are just, they're people who are counting on anonymity. They're saying the most inflammatory things. And so I, I think that we, that the disrespect that he's attributing to solely young black men who are following advice of organizations like Black Lives Matters, I think that's misplaced by putting that in, in those eggs in, in all that basket. To totally. I, I don't think you can blame one organization or single out one organization because because look 
frankly, there's a lot of young lawyers uh, and, and, and lawyers in our generation who disrespect the system, that, that don't dress like lawyers, they don't act like lawyers. Of all different um, races and skin colors correct, you're talking about. Correct, correct. Right. I mean, I'm just talking about the, the whole. I'm not talking, I'm not trying to single out a specific race. I'm just saying that you look at, I mean, there's, there's some people who, who show up to court. They could be white, they could be black, they could be Mexican, they could be Asian, and they purport to be a lawyer, and I'm like, you're not acting like a lawyer. You don't you look know, like one. You don't you look don't like act a lawyer. Like one. You show up to court in jeans and Crocs. Uh, and Crocs. <laughs> you, 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 you know, you, you show up looking like this. You talk yeah. to the judge like this. I mean, you don't act like a lawyer should act. Yeah, that, uh, uh, that's a Honor, real good look. Your Honor, Your Honor, Your Honor, I have a motion. Somewhere. I, ha I have a motion here, Judge. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Give me a break. And, and a lot of people will probably say, "Oh, you're just old-fashioned," but I mean, there are some things, quite frankly. Uh, the practice of law being one of them, I'm okay with a little old fashionedness in it. I, I, I'm okay with that. I, I, I'm okay. What do you mean with, by? I mean, I, I am as well. But what do you mean by old fashionedness? Uh, like wearing a suit, wearing a suit and a tie, uh, to go to court, to meet with clients. Um, but you're you, you're okay with women not wearing skirts and pantyhose? They can wear whatever they want as far right. as no, I'm, professional I, dress. Right, right, right. I'm I'm just saying in your decorum, the way you approach things, not. You know, um, and very be, being very proper in the way you address a court, being very proper in the way you address opposing counsel. I mean, there are a lot of people. This the, you walk in to to, and it's I will say this: it's even worse on the civil side than it is on the criminal side. I can uh, imagine. But 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 there are lawyers who uh, you go in, you know, to face a DA or or any prosecutor anywhere. Um, and, and there are some who just completely treat you with contempt. And, and they don't look at you as a fellow member of the bar, you know? They look at you as like you're just, you're just a, a, a piece of scum who happens to have a bar card. And, well, and, but, and but, but, a lot of that, but a lot of that is earned by the defense lawyer themselves, too. That, that um, may be in some cases. But, but, but you know, I, I just think that there has to be, you got to come back a little bit and, and, and maybe put a little more professionalism. And, and look, there are some judges who act completely unprofessional, mm -hmm. completely unprofessional from the bench, you know, and, and what they do. And, and so I, I think to some degree that that is also problematic because that sets the tone for how people view the courts when they come in for jury duty, for, you know, as a as a party, whether it's as a criminal defendant, a party in a divorce case, a party in a civil case. If you see the judge acting crazy and acting unprofessional, and then you see the lawyers acting crazy and unprofessional, just it doesn't, it doesn't really... command any respect. No, and I'm I've been seeing this now, and I'm really going to be interested to see this next January if there's if there is a big shift in the political makeup of the bench in Harris County, but with <laughs> the one Democratic judge that we have in the county courts, I've heard prosecutors to my face dismiss him by just saying, oh, it's just judge, it's just the judge, that's, that's why there, this, this was, no probable cause was found, or this PR bond was granted, it's just that judge. <coughs> and it's like, well, wait a second. It's terrible. Respect the Absolutely fact that he terrible. is an elected official in <coughs> Harris County, that the voters in Harris County said, we want that person to be on this bench, and the fact that he's a licensed attorney like you and I, and the fact that he's now a judge. Like, have some respect for the, for that, I think we're just getting to a point where maybe we've all, it's always been this way and I'm just getting to the age where I can now see the problems that are going on, but it sounds like what Jimmy's wanting, and I'm not too far off, is to make courts great again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, as LaHood said, drain the swamp, or was it Trump? You yeah. heard, you heard yeah. LaHood, the guy down in the district attorney down in San Antonio who got, lost. Who his lost, seat. yes. Yeah, he so lost. Did, uh, Abel Reyna. Reyna lost, too. Reyna lost, too. Yeah. What's going to happen to all the Waco cases? No, get this the place. biker cases? Yeah. Uh, LaHood lost. I bet a lot of Reyna lost. lost. All the Mexicans are losing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, man. I'm not touching that. But I do want to say that I also think that on, Bla on the Black Lives Matter, kind of ironic for them to lose on the day they on, on the day of the Alamo, right? You know what I? You know what? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I'm with you, man. This it's Twilight Zone that's going on here. Well, I just I, I just want to say I think that it's important to say that I think that the judge is incorrect in asserting that Black Lives Matter teaches people to resist police, because 
Is that correct or incorrect? I don't think it's. I don't think that's correct. I don't think Black Lives Matter teaches people to resist a police. In fact, I think one of their first, like, slogans was "Hands up, don't shoot." And hand, putting your hands up is like the least resisting thing you can do. Yeah. And it's what most police officers want you to. Well, do. And, and, and 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 going circling back, looping back our prior gun discussion. It's, it's funny that the the NRA and other people, the people who you know who show, who want to have guns to fight the government the same way, you need to show respect for the government. Well, right. wait, wait a second, right. aren't we the ones who are supposed to be all right. crazy if they come to take our weapons and take our freedom? You know, we're ready to fight back, but we're, well, we're supposed to show them respect, you know? But the, the interesting thing with Black Lives Matter is, is that I can understand the judge might be going off some of the media reports about it to make yeah. you, leave you with the impression that they're teaching you resist the police. But, one of the, what we found out, and I'm gonna loop this back into Russia, but what we found out Whoa. through the, the Russian investigation was that one of the biggest Twitter accounts that was associated with the Black Lives Matter movement was Blacktivist, and that was run by a, some Russian guy and somebody, some guy in Russia. Um, and how much of that was fueling what was ending up, ending up on the media? Yeah. And so I, I just think we all need to kind of step back, including Judge McSpadden, and before we start attributing these kinds of things to anybody, uh, including us attributing things and motives and beliefs to Judge McSpadden, but also him, him attributing these to or organizations, whether he, they're ragtag or not. Right. I mean, there's just some the, the possibilities for misinformation these days and campaigns of misinformation um, is just so overwhelming. I mean, the, 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 the technology we have nowadays just allows people to to launch these campaigns in such a fashion and, and they, they spread like wildfire in such a short period of time. That's okay though. And I don't have a problem with whatever the meddling that Russia has done. Spreading in our... misinformation is okay? Yes, because the, the problem is not the person spreading it. The problem is the person who's consuming it and just swallowing it hook, line, and sinker. Yeah, but let's, that's let's, why I don't mind our de de a democratic society that's open and we're supposed to have an exchange of ideas. As long as you're not partitioning this group over here and this group 100 feet away and putting them behind fences and putting police officers, a certain number of police officers between them, if they can have it out, then we'll get to a solution of these things. I mean, the problem is we're a society of suckers. That's, that's yes, the real issue. That is the issue. I mean, that's I would, the issue. I would venture to say, 85 to 90 percent of the people living in this country and the world are just suckers. They're, they're flat out suckers. And you may disagree with me, fine, but there is ample proof to prove otherwise. I mean, look how many people still fall for Ponzi schemes to this day, okay? Look at all the idiots investing in, in cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. Like, really? Why are you still doing this? Like, yeah. Because 90 percent of the people in this world are suckers and, and, and they'll believe anything. If you tell them the, the, the sky is green, they'll believe it. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I, I must go out and buy that Bitcoin tomorrow because it's going to make me a million dollars. I mean, people are stupid. People are stupid, you know? I mean, and, 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 and that's honestly the, the philosophical differences between, I don't want to use nations, but I'm going to use nations, but they're going to be representative of political philosophies of the United States and, and a country like Russia, is that Russians... Vladimir Putin specifically has said this. He thinks that dem democracies are run by fools. And, Look at the people we voted in. I agree with you. <laughs> they, the, the, the potential for that is, is huge. As if you have an uninformed uh, public and voting electorate who are not informing, they're just reading Twitter, you know, 160 words or what's now 320. I'm just reading something and going, oh, I fully TV. believe that, 100%. I will read things and go, oh, my God, that, that resonates with me perfectly. But I will go and just check it somewhere else and see if it's true before I just swallow something hook, line, and sinker. See, That's I see what we I have a responsibility to do. When I see something, I always first believe it's an onion story. <laughs> right, me too. I always we go, should oh all have that the onion? Is that what is that? We should, all, we should all have that attitude. We should read something and go, huh. I have a, a healthy dose of skepticism about that. Let me look into that myself. Right. And I, I just automatically start from the default position that has to be written for the onion. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> is that the onion? None. But you know, but it goes back to uh, we have a saying, I have a saying, uh, F the facts or screw the facts. I don't care what the facts are because most people, they will, uh, they already have their predisposed decisions or ideas of how things should be. 
and then filter anything else that you tell them through their own bias and opinions and then eventually come to their own opinion. Um, and I think we saw that in some of our elections this year, uh, in, in some of the local elections. Um, there were a lot of candidates who were highly, highly qualified who lost to people who, quite frankly, aren't, okay? I mean, qualified in the sense of in the name of the law, but as far as experience or weight, uh, they had zero. And um, what's your take on uh, that happening in the November elections? That's what happens when people don't inform themselves of the votes. I mean, we saw that in county criminal court at law number eight in the Republican primary, where we had a very experienced jurist who was unseated for reasons that were political, had nothing to do with him being a criminal judge. And we are now, the voters are going to have to choose between, frankly, two people who have relatively similar lengths of career, but one of them has a background that's going to be not good for anybody, no matter what your political background is. And, you know, I, the, that race was determined by uh, the, the special interest in the, poli in the parties. And that's, that's a shame because that's going to really hurt people in Harris County, citizens of Harris County. Isn't it amazing how powerful a few people hold called the slates in Harris County uh, have. It is amazing, it is phenomenal. If you're not backed by these people, you're going to lose. Or other way around, if you are backed by these people, you are going to win. Right, or that's, going that's to win. That's the scary part of it. And, and I, I will go, so I, I, I'm gonna say on air, so I'm not misquoted or something, hey, congratulations, good luck, keep up the good fight, uh, Dan, congratulations, awesome. You, uh, but I can't wait. I think the uh, race to watch county criminal law uh, court number eight, Franklin Bynum, Dan Simons. <laughs> Do you have any idea how amazing that race is going to be? And Dan, you better come on the show that time, please. Franklin, we got a seat ready for you because both of them, uh, I do, I, both of them. I admire both of their ability and uh, willpower to just say whatever the heck they want to say yeah. and go. I think County Criminal Court of Law Number Eight is going to be the one of the most hotly contested uh, uh, races uh, that's coming up. I can't wait to see how that unfolds. I'm with you, and I really hope that both candidates come on the show. and And we're not looking for fireworks or a fight or any or blood to be spilled. But just have a I discourse. Am. I'm for blood. Yeah, that'd be okay. Awesome. They, they I, want I, blood, I, I, but from the booth mm -hmm. where I'm safe from blood, I just want the public to hear people with differing viewpoints. And I have a pretty strong belief that Franklin Bynum and Dan Simons have differing viewpoints. You don't think? You don't say? Uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure they have pretty different <laughs> opposing <laughs> views on certain things. Come on here mm. and tell people why you should vote for your position over another. I'm still trying to sort out the different views that they might have. You don't buy it? That stuff's going to be right, amazing. Right down the middle together? They, they, they're just so similar. <laughs> it's um, going to be amazing. I can't wait. <laughs> well, and that's Dan, what we're going to do. We're going to congrats, gonna... Franklin, congrats. But look, I mean, here's Boom. Here, here's the thing. I mean, I I, I, I like Judge Carahan. I've, I've, I've never had a, 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 Absolutely. an issue with him. But I also, I don't, I don't have a problem with change. I don't either. Agreed. Yeah. You know? I mean, Agreed. look, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. You can make the argument that it's great to have experience and put people in experience, but guess what? There was a time when he came on the bench, he didn't have judicial experience. You're right. Mm -hmm. You're right. Mm -hmm. you, only, you only get the experience by being there. And I know, I, and, and, and look, a lot of people are going to say that, that they're going to judge Dan by his past and say that because of that, he can't be a good judge. There's just absolutely no way. There, there are people who are going to say the same thing about Franklin. Mm -hmm. Because of, 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 of what he's done in his past or the fact that he lacks experience or the kind of cases that he's handled. But here's the thing. Both of them, okay, I, I think each in their own separate way, uh, they get on the bench. You gain experience by being on the bench. And, yeah, you may have one point of view and you get on there and, and think you're going to do things a different way. But once you get on there, you don't know what you're going to do until you actually put on the robe and get on the bench. 
I don't. I agree with everything you said there, Jimmy. I'm. I'm, and I'm not saying that Dan shouldn't have won. I'm only saying my problem was my, my response was into what JV asked about these slate tickets where people are told this is who we think you should vote for, and that is what yeah. crowns people the winner of these races. That's where my problem is. If and, and that's the thing is we offered Dan to come on here, and I really hope that he does. I genuinely mean that. And we want, and it's not a setup or anything like that. I want people to hear from the candidates who they're going to be looking at a ballot and deciding who to pick from, and he didn't want to come on. And, or he wasn't able to make it work or whatever it was, we couldn't get him on the show in that time. And that's something that I would like to see more candidates come on and, and talk to the voters so the voters can make informed decisions. They're not duped into something they got in their mailbox or something they see on Twitter or on any other websites. I've known, uh, I've known Franklin since I've been a lawyer. I've known Dan since he's been a lawyer. I've tried cases against Dan. I've, I've worked with cases on Franklin. I can't wait to see what happens yeah. in the November ballot. Another big race, uh, Wanagiri went down. Wanagiri, yeah. he went down yeah. uh, to uh, a, a candidate who um, doesn't have much criminal law experience whatsoever. Uh, the, one of the theories behind it is that he went down because it, she was a woman and the, there was a big woman push and man versus woman on the D side, they're gonna vote for the woman. Same thing happened with Tanya uh, but Tanya's been involved in, in it also, too, and she's an incredible lawyer, too. And I, I'm not saying that they won merely because they're women, either. I'm not saying that. However, uh, we saw that kind of trend, and from other women candidates, we're, we're hearing that as well, uh, that, uh, you know, this is the year of, of women and minorities, you know, kind of deal. But going back to Juan, uh, he lost a big race, too. Yeah. And, you know... Um, we're potentially going to have some misdemeanor judges who uh, never tried a criminal case in their life. Yeah. You know? I mean, we have that on the felony bench now. We have that on the Supreme Court as well. That's true. In the United States. That's but, true. Yeah, and, that, and that's a real problem. And I, I think it all comes back to, and I hope I'm not asking or having too high of expectations to ask that people who go into a voting booth to vote, and it should be everyone, that they go in there with some level of information that's correct, that they've looked into, they've read themselves, they're not just doing what somebody else told them to do, and they educate themselves to some degree. I think, the you're, issues having, the I think you're having too high of an expectation. Well, I, I'm not going to stop that. <laughs> I'm not going to I'm not gonna to lose it. Some of otherwise, the, we're just going to keep doing what we've done. Nothing's going to change, and I do think change needs to happen, but let's make sure we're doing it with, with the right information. I mean, look, I just think you have... A, my wife, who is, she's got a graduate degree. She went to law school. She couldn't tell you who on earth is running for any of the judicial positions. She couldn't. Why? She hadn't practiced law. She, she, she moved on to another business and, and started her own business outside the practice of law. And even when she was in the law, other than, you know, a couple civil judges when she, when she was practicing civil law, she didn't know anybody on the criminal side. She didn't know anything about them. This is somebody who's educated. And she didn't want to learn. I didn't say I needed people to be educated. I said they need to be informed. She didn't want to be informed. Well, <laughs> with, with, was it Spider-Man? I'm just saying, with great, I mean, with great power comes great responsibility. responsibility. I'm just saying. And if, the power, if, if, power if, is voting for your, the people who are going to represent you in government. I, I agree. I'm just saying. I, you know, I just think that expectation is a little so too high. So your email address, I'll send her some, who, some, who else, some, some articles she can read. Who else has been on the show that uh, that that won or lost? Uh, Lori Botello lost. Yeah, Lori did She lose. ran a real good campaign. She she, she lost. Um, She's very passionate about her positions on things. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we offered to have her opponent come on. He couldn't make it work for scheduling reasons or whatever. And um, I hope that Aaron will consider coming on for the general. Um, Let's see who else we had. Jason uh, Long won. Jason Long won. Yep. Over uh, we had De uh, uh, Brendan Dunn. Brendan right. Dunn on. Yeah. yeah. And Raul Rodriguez won. Over Renfro. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see. We started this whole thing off with an old college friend of mine, Chris Perry, from mm -hmm. uh, came in from Austin. He was running for U.S. Congress. He came in top of his list, but he's got to have a runoff on May 11th. So. That's another one. Gene Wu was running unopposed, I think. Andrew Wright won. Yeah, Andrew won. Gus Aper? Gus won. Yep. Gus. Um, coming up, you know, 
there's going to be so many races. There's going to be a lot of races. The Court uh, 5 race, um, um, it was... Uh, uh, Fleischer uh, won. Fleischer won that one. On Fleischer the, won. The Aaron Saldana almost pulled a runoff. Yeah, it came within, like, less than a point. I asked the dude, I said, Aaron... Why are you wearing a Dallas Cowboys shirt on your campaign like <laughs> photo and stuff? Come on, man. <laughs> Come on. You would have sealed that deal, that extra point. No, look. Just wear a Texan shirt. Not all Tejanos are, <laughs> are Cowboys. I'm a Cowboy, but I'm, in my heart, I'm Stro. You know, I'm, I'm Houston. You can't, well, I guess you can't be both. I'm going to call Houston. But I, I, thought, for, I thought to myself, Wow, dude, you almost pulled something off. And a lot of, and through the chat house and the chat in the courtrooms and the courthouses are, it's all about the name. What's your name was? What, what, is it a Mexican name? Is it a woman name? Is it a white name? Is it a black name? And you know, I guess that's just politics. Yeah. Who's, who won the Democratic primary for the Senate, for U.S. Senate, up against Ted Cruz? Beto. What's his last name? Uh, Beto. O'Rourke. O'Rourke. Oh. That was that's what I was like. He's just he's just everybody's gonna be so confused they're gonna vote for him. Yeah. Beto O'Rourke. Well, now and now Cruz is 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 making fun of him and or you know criticizing him for changing his name to sound more Hispanic. It's like wait 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 you're Raphael. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Where'd Ted come from? Yeah. Mr. Cruz. <laughs> Even Beto <sighs> got a criminal right. He got popped for a Berg have or Berg. And they dumped that one. He has a couple, and a DWI, I think. Don't don't quote me on this, Beto. But he has some record too. Anyway. He's gonna quote you on that in that lawsuit. <laughs> yeah, quote. Hey, hey, look, hey, pull me up, dude. Where where do where you want me? What do you want? What do you want? The end of the show, it says the views expressed in the show are not those of HCCLA. They're just those <laughs> of the hosts. Those of Julio Vela. <laughs> yeah, they're all JVs. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> Hey, you got about 30 what, seconds left. What you want, man? What you got to say in what your last you 30 seconds? What, what, what does Justin have to say well, in look, the last 30 seconds? I, because I, I really, you're in the honor seat. I, thank you. I do appreciate you guys letting me come on again and letting me have the last couple months of shows. Um, I know it was a little bit difficult at times because I had a plan and I was inflexible on that, but most people in my life are used to me being, not being very flexible it's about all, things. It's all wonder, water under the bridge. Yeah, good, because it's, it's, it's past. <laughs> so, but going forward, the next few months, I think we're going to shift back to y'all's current events discussions, and then hopefully late summer, fall, we're going to kick off a whole another round of candidate shows and have people who are sitting for the general election come on. But you're giving us the next week off for spring break, right? That's what I've been told. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We have demanded that. <laughs> we, we have demanded not to be forced labor next week. So. Hey, hey. Uh, oh, oh. So Julio and I will be out on spring break <laughs> next week. <laughs> And we'll be back in two weeks, ladies and gentlemen. But that's all the time we have for tonight. So for my co-host, Julio Vela, and our guest, our producer, Justin Harris, uh, we Thank wish you all a good evening, a good weekend, and have a great next week if you're on spring break. And we'll be back the week following with another new episode of Reasonable Doubt. Good night, everybody. <laughs>